So thank you all very much for coming tonight. Um, we uh, have a special um, pairing of two interesting films for you, and I just want to briefly say that the second film that you're going to watch, The Price of Peace, the New Zealand film by, by Kim Webby, was programmed because while this is a story that is taking place far away, uh, we think that it really resonates with on the ground struggles of indigenous resistance here and, and uh, layers of colonization here in Canada as well. And there is also an element of reconciliation that is present in the film that I think resonates with the Canadian uh, colonial context. So um, this is why we programmed that film and we're very excited to be showing it on a big screen because it's a beautiful film. Tonight's screening is part of a book launch uh, that we just had in the Hive Cafe for Thomas Waugh's new book, The Conscience of Cinema, a book about a tome of several thousand pages uh, uh, documenting the life work of Joris Evans. And we will be showing a short that Tom has programmed to go with The Price of Peace. He's going to explain how those two films work together in a minute. Um, but before I invite him up, I just want to say a couple of words about Tom, who is sitting right here and has been sitting in that seat for uh, almost every single screening that we've had here at Cinema Politica for over a decade. And he is the first professor that I met here at Concordia when I arrived almost 15 years ago and I had discovered his book in the library and I went and found him at his office and he gave me his very last uh, book uh, copy and I believe it was even typewritten. Um, and it's called Show Us Life, and it's about the idea of committed documentarians, documentary filmmakers who uh, are beyond just people who make art, but they're committed to the political struggles that they document and the communities that they document, and that their work goes beyond just the capturing of those stories. And it was a very important book for me. And I want to say also that uh, Tom is retiring. He's been teaching here for 40 years at Concordia University and he's teaching his last class this semester, I believe, and will be retiring this summer, and it's a great loss to the Concordia community, but it's not like he's going far. He'll still be in Montreal, and we hope he'll still be coming to Cinema Politica screenings. He's been a huge support for Cinema Politica over all of these years, and on one last level, I'd like to say that he is a model for the type of committed academic activists that we need at our universities. He redistributes the wealth of the university, including knowledge and resources, and he works with activists in several communities all year round, and his work is an incredibly important both in the academy and in the communities that he works with. So I would like to welcome him to the stage with a warm round of applause and invite him down. Thank you all for coming. It's a great honor to be here. And I'm really thrilled that Cinema Politica had the idea of doing this, or was it my idea? I can't remember. I thought it was your idea of this pairing. Uh, last week, uh, Cinema Politica uh, marked the 20th anniversary of the manufacture of consent. The 25th, I think it's very important to keep our eyes on the archive, on our history uh, as media spectators and makers. The little film we're about to look at now it's the 70th anniversary of Indonesia Calling, a film that Joris Evans made in Australia in 1946 and released in 1947. And in many ways, this is a film that anticipates the kind of work that many of you are doing, kind of cell phone, zero budget activist filmmaking. They had to scrounge for little bits of celluloid to make this film. They had to. Uh, hide from the police. Their ratio was one to one. Uh, and it's a beautiful little film. Uh, when they showed the rushes to one of their friends, uh, the friend said, if you can make out of a film out of this mess, I can make Ben-Hur from the home movies I made in my backyard. And they made it. So uh, I think in many ways, uh, this book ties in with the mission of Cinema Politica. Uh, Evans working from the 1920s to his death in 1989, invented many aspects of political cinema, of activist documentary, that Cinema Politica has been showing us all these years. With this little film made in Australia, together with Indonesian uh, 
uh, nationalist exiles who had been interned in Australia during the war, I think in many ways he invented the anti-colonial solidarity film, uh, the, the kind of film that follows tonight in many ways, and that of course is part of the, the repertoire of Cinema Politica throughout the years. Um, uh, so in many ways, uh, when everyone else in 1946 was making big commissioned documentaries about uh, recovery from the war, he was on the streets making activist, uh, uh, activist films against the colonial powers who were trying to recoup their possessions in Southeast Asia, such as the French in Indochina, the Dutch in Indonesia, or what they then called the Dutch East India, or the British, of course, in places like uh, Malaysia. So it was a very prophetic film, and I'm glad we get a chance to celebrate its 70th anniversary tonight. Uh, and uh, basically, Evans wrote this book for me. His films are so wonderful. He made almost 70 films, and they deserve being recycled for the 21st century, and this little opportunity to start that process is something that I welcome very much. Um, if you would like a free digital copy of the book, there are two left. Farron has them right there. He has his hand up. Uh, so if you're going to mob Farron, he has two copies. Otherwise, it's available open access online through Amsterdam University Press, but without the pictures. Okay, so uh, thank you Cinema Politica, thank you uh, Amsterdam University Press, and thank you all my friends and colleagues who are here, and you who have come to see this really important film. <laughs>